Hi, Dale coming to you from my garage again. And back in 2016, we bought season tickets to the football Mercer University Bears here down in Georgia. That's where my son goes to school and that's where my wife graduated and earned her master's degree. Yes, I said 2016. It has taken me this long to edit this video. And yes, again, since my wife has a master's degree and I do not, that officially makes her smarter than I am. You may not know it by looking at me, but in my younger days, I really was quite the athlete. Today, I really can't play baseball or football like I used to, but I still can compete with some of the most elite well-trained athletes on the planet. Of course I mean cornhole. Stick around, I'll show you how to make these. It's easy, I promise. Come on, let's go. The first thing I do is rough cut all the sides from two by fours. I think I cut these at 26 inches and 50 inches, which should leave me plenty of room to cut the final size later. Just like most of my projects that I make from dimensional lumber or two by lumber, I clean up all sides of my table saw. I still don't have a jointer or a thickness planer, but I think my table saw does a fine job at it. I trim up all four sides, which in my opinion, leaves me with a pretty nice looking and clean board. Now that the sides of the two by fours are cleaned up, they're no longer one and a half inches by three and a half inches. I need to figure out how long to cut the longer boards so that the total length will be 48 inches. The easiest way to do this is to forget math because math is hard. Simply take the two shorter boards together and place the longer board perpendicular to them. Now I can simply measure to 48 inches. And yes, I know, perpendicular is a geometry word and geometry is math. I'm sorry. Now that I have all boards marked, I can cut them all to size with my crosscut sled. The smaller ones at 24 inches and the larger ones at, well, I really don't care how long they are, only that I cut them on the mark I made, which will make the total length to 48 inches. Hey, did you know that I have a video on how I made my crosscut sled? Look in the description below for a link to it. There are several ways to attach the boards together. The easiest is probably to simply butt them against each other and screw in through one board into the other. I chose to use pocket holes. I don't really have any reason why, I just decided to. I put two pocket holes on each end of the long side pieces. After the pocket holes were drilled, I aligned the boards against each other so that the longer boards with the pocket holes butt up against the shorter boards. I used a Craig right angle clamp to securely hold the boards in place and a speed square to make sure they stay square. I then drive in the pocket hole screws to attach the sides together. Once you connect all sides, you should be left with a 24 inch by 48 inch frame all squared up. Make sure you measure correctly as the cornhole cops play hardball. If you mess around with these measurements, they will find you and don't expect mercy. With the frame put together, it's now time to cut the tops. I'm using 3 quarter inch birch plywood for mine. If you use less than 3 quarter inch, you may want to think about putting a cross section to your frame to give it more support. The 3 quarter inch will be plenty strong enough so I did not use a cross brace. The plywood is already at 48 inches wide, so I just need to cut to 24 inches. For this, I use my ghetto track saw. Link to that video below. That was actually one of my first videos I ever created. The main thing to remember when cutting these tops is to take into consideration the thickness of the blade. So cut on the correct side of the line. To attach the tops to the frames, I glue and screw. I'm using Type On 2, which is water resistant, not waterproof. Type On 3 is waterproof, but I didn't have any on hand and didn't feel like driving to the store to get any. I think Type On 2's water resistance qualities will be plenty, as these aren't going to be stored outside. Besides, these will be painted and polyurethane as well, which will help with protection from the weather. While screwing the top to the frame, you might find that some of the 2x4s have a bow in them. This is pretty common when dealing with dimensional lumber. 
Just push or pull them to line up flush with the top and then get the first screw in. That's all that's generally needed to then straighten them out and hold them in place. There are several ways to cut the hole. You could use a jigsaw or a router. Both would work fine. I bought a cheap six inch hole saw to do mine. Mark a spot centered from side to side, which should be 12 inches in and then nine inches from the top. Again, those cornhole cops will hunt you down if you don't get this measurement correct. I drill a small pilot hole so that I can easily start the hole from the bottom and finish from the top. This will help eliminate any tear out. And by cheap hole saw, I mean cheap. This thing was only a couple of dollars and it really kind of sucks. It was not very sharp at all and really had me working for this hole. I had to go to my corded drill for the extra power to get the job done, but in the end, I was left with a nice perfect six inch hole. Now it's on to the legs. Just like the sides, I start by milling down all four sides so that I'm left with nice clean boards. Again, if you have a jointer or a thickness planer, use them because it's a lot easier, but the table saw really does work quite well. Next, mark the center of the legs one and a half inches from one end. After marking the first time, come back and do it again, this time marking the actual center. At least this time, I didn't cut before I noticed I was wrong on my measurement. I'm using a compass to mark a radius around the end of the leg using the center point as reference. You could use any can or lid or anything else you want. Now using my jigsaw, I cut the arc out of each leg. This is going to allow the leg to rotate under the cornhole board. In reality, you could probably simply just cut notches out of each corner and that would work just as well. I clean up the rounded ends using my belt sander clamped to my table. Using a small scrap of 2x4 as a spacer, I clamp the leg to the inside of the cornhole board. This will allow me to drill a 3 8 inch hole through the leg and the side of the cornhole board. I use the centered mark I made on the leg as the point for the hole. The spacer is going to allow the leg to rotate around and lock in against the top part of the frame at a good angle to hold the board up. Rinse and repeat for the leg on the other side of the board as well as the two legs on the other board. I use a 3 8 inch galvanized bolt to attach the leg to the cornhole board. Using a hammer, hit it into place. To connect the leg, place a washer between the sideboard and the leg, and then another washer on the other side of the leg. You can see here I'm using two nuts to tighten down the leg. I later switched this to a wing nut as that is far more convenient. I just didn't have any on hand and I went to buy a couple of them later. To figure out the angle and length to cut the legs at is really pretty easy. Cornhole equipment rule number five. The front of the board is three inches to four inches from the ground to the top of the playing surface. Cornhole equipment rule number six. The back of the board is 12 inches from the ground to the top of the playing surface. With the board set to the side of your table so that the leg swings freely to the side, simply prop up the back of the board with whatever you have on hand so that the top of the back of the playing surface is 12 inches high. Once you have that, fully open the leg and scribe a line using your table as your guide. Your table is acting as the ground, so from that point up to the top of the board is 12 inches. You now have the line you need to cut at. Take the legs with the scribe lines to your miter saw, set your miter saw to the angle to match the line. Now cut the angles on all legs. Reassemble the legs on the board and the board construction is now complete. The only thing left to do is to make your boards look purty. The first step in making it look purty is filling all the screw holes with wood putty. After that, it's up to your own imagination on what you want to do to your boards. All right, you don't like me 
and I don't like you, that doesn't mean we can't work together. Now let's get out there and get the job done. I start by putting down a coat of primer on all sides of the boards. Then the insides of both boards get painted black. After that, it's simply putting down the base coats where I need it, setting painter's tape, and then painting the inside colors. I know I don't have to tell any of you how there is something just so satisfying in removing the painter's tape to reveal the final product. So here they are. I think they turned out great. We really like them. We have a lot of fun with them. You can tell they've been used an awful lot since 2016. Anyways, if you liked the video, give it that thumbs up like. Share a comment on what you thought I could have done better or what you really liked about it. And share the video with your friends. That really helps me out. And if you haven't already, subscribe to me so that you don't miss any of my future projects. Now, I'm going to go show you how I can play this game like a boss. That's really unfortunate you had to see that, but I'll prove to you that I can still play like I say I do. All right, I suck at this game. <laughs>